views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Balo hosts Sarah Main on her ongoing journey of conscious confidence and gain timeless wisdom to unleash unparalleled confidence. A conscious confidence. Learn to ignite the living spark of wisdom, a new narrative for fulfillment contained in Sanskrit and the ancient, powerful, engaging, and fun conscious conversations to discover your own magnificent true self. Learn to dispel the fear shadow as Sarah provides essential knowledge about embracing change and the power of transformation. Get ready. Conscious Confidence starts now. Hey, everyone. I'm Dr. Pat, and I am here with Sarah Main. And so I just want to be very clear. I am really here. <laughs> uh, like, and so is Sarah. And so is Sarah. Right. But like physically here. In studio. We can like high five it. Yeah, Let's kind of. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yes, most of the time, you all see us, and we're on social media, and we're on Facebook, and we're doing the show live video. But we are continents apart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hence, what I was talking about in the last show about digital media. And um, you know, once upon a time. I used to be a little bit like, why are people saying that about us? Why are people saying that about me? And one of the things that Sarah is going to talk about today, it's so important. It's so important. It was important in my journey. And, you know, Benny, it was it was interesting when I talked to Diana at the front desk Mm -hmm. and I said Sarah was coming and and Diana asked, well, okay, well, what's her show about? And what I said was. Instead of saying conscious confidence, because that is the main message, I said it's about a timeless wisdom and ancient Sanskrit. And Diana lit up. (laughs) She knew exactly what I was talking about. And a number of years ago, when I first met Sarah, I didn't know, but I had a sense, but I didn't know for sure if this day would arrive. And one of the things that I think we'll talk about today is how Sanskrit, and I don't mean that per se, but there's, there's something inherent in it. There is a timeless wisdom, but how that timeless wisdom has shaped the very moment we're in today, right? Because sometimes the journey takes us on a road or a pathway where we have to trust and yet we don't quite understand why that is. Sometimes it doesn't look like you think it's going to look, but yet we know we have to move forward. But Sanskrit, today's show, Conscious Confidence Radio, which is Sarah Main's show, um, and we're going to talk about her book today too, it is a gateway to clarity success, and confidence. And here's what I've learned about it, which is very little. When I was at my worst physically, and Benny, I was coming in here, right? Yep. I was about 100 pounds heavier. Yeah. Never said anything to me, Benny. Thank nope, you. No, nope, no, nope. Why would I ever do that? Um, <laughs> I know. Because my cells stopped working. You know, it wasn't because I was eating cheese balls or doing that. And I kept, I kept my healing journey to myself for two reasons. One, I didn't know if I'd live. But one of the things that happened in a very unusual way is I started to listen to mantras. Let me just call them that. Let me just say mantras. Now, this girl from the Bronx, listening to people's names, names that I couldn't pronounce on radio, (laughs) right, that were doing things that you do on every show, not understanding a single thing about what the message was, clearly helped me move from a place of almost devastation to where we are today. 
But this is your life, Sarah, and this is your life path, and this is what conscious confidence is about, and this is what the world needs. And so it is beyond an honor to have you here today, a moment that we suspected we'd have and share (laughs) but couldn't predict because you did follow this timeless ancient wisdom. And so I want to welcome you right here to this studio, (laughs) which we've spent a lot of time in, and to the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. What an introduction. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. It is marvelous to be actually here with you. Uh, it, you know, Sarah, what do you make of what I say? And I, this is a great way to start to talk about Sanskrit. Um, you know, back in the day, I, I can't even tell you how badly I, mi- I, I mispronounced Sanskrit. And what did I call I used to call it something else, but it was horrible. I'm not even going to go there. But I knew about the power. Mm. But what you've done is you've taken a lifetime of this timeless wisdom and you've brought it forward into our pop culture, into our world, into mainstream or alternative, whatever you want to call it, as a way for us to transform. Yes. The thing that struck me about Sanskrit uh, from the very beginning, and I I started studying Sanskrit, was introduced to it when I was 13. Um. So, you know, I I can't remember a time in my life really where I wasn't surrounded by it. And I had a natural inclination. I love music. I love languages. So there was just an instant connection. Um, But as I've gone along, there's, you know, Sanskrit's like the complete uh, proton pill. Do you remember that? uh, Was it Batfink? I can't remember. There was a a cartoon uh, years ago when I was growing up. And they took an energy pill called a proton pill. That's remember? right. <laughs> and it was the complete food. <laughs> yeah. And I taught Sanskrit for years to children at school. Um, and I've taught it to adults as well for years. And it, but particularly with children, it struck me as like the proton pill because it's got everything in it. There's the, the beauty of the sound, the very vibrations. There's the meaning and the richness of the etymology which is transformative. There's the structure and the grammar. There's all the literature. There's everything. But it's remote for most people. Yeah. Um, but going back to what Sanskrit means, the actual word is not actually Sanskrit. That's a sort of shortened firm form of it. The, the actual word is Sanskrita, Sanskrita, and that means pure and perfectly formed. Mm. And that's why you don't know anything about a meaning and yet it works because it's pure and perfectly formed and it hasn't changed. Now, in linguistic terms, they refer to it as a dead language like they do Latin because it's not evolving like English. How we speak English now is different from 100 years ago, for example, and new words are coming into the vocabulary, etc. And that's wonderful. And yet, because of that, things do change. Whereas Sanskrit is maintains its power, its potency, its meaning intact. And, you know, that's why you don't know anything, but you're listening to mantras and they have an effect because the potency and the energy is intact. It's uncorrupted. Um, and that's phenomenal when you think about it. It's beyond phenomenal. And it is so important to what it does energetically, vibrationally, in moving beyond the day-to-day, the social media, the Facebook, you know, the, the uh, uh, live streaming video, the, uh, uh, the new database and system, it, all, it moves beyond it. But here's, here's what's interesting, and maybe you can talk to this because I think this is super important too. So I get teased a lot about it because... And I'll share this during the break with you. I, I will find something in particular and I will play it over and over and over and over and over and over. And to, to everybody else, it seems a little, I mean, I've even been called OCD around it. And that is, you know, for me, <laughs> believe me, I know folks that struggle with that. But that's not it. See, it's what you're talking about. There's something that I cannot explain about why I have to 
listen to this one piece on certain days over and over. Yeah. Well, look, there's so many ways to respond to that, but the this there'll be something in the the very sound, the very vibration, and to be honest with you, the understanding of that will be beyond deeper than your normal thinking conscious mind. So that's why you may not be able to actually verbalize or in a sense understand why, but there'll be a hunger, there'll be a need within you and that very vibration is meeting that need. And you can rest assured that when that need is satisfied or met and there's a wholeness and a completion, you'll just find yourself probably not even remembering to sit and listen to that. It just won't even come to your mind because that particular need has been met. Mm. It's like you're hungry for something and you eat it and then once you've had it, you're satisfied. You don't desire that any longer. But the fact that there's a desire there and you can take it in means it's meeting something within you. And, you know, we're going to take a short break when we come back. I think I'm going to share that to see what Sarah uh, makes of it. But this is not the only thing. I think you all know what I'm talking about. I, I have a funny feeling you don't even know that this is Sanskrit. And here's what I'm about <laughs> to say. Sarah and I have talked about this a lot offline. In our pop culture, across our United States, all over the world, have you ever noticed a symbol tattoo on someone and thought to yourself, ah, but you have no idea what it is? Maybe written correctly, may not be written, <laughs> but what you'll find out is it's Sanskrit. Why is that? Just like we're talking about today, and because of this hunger and this longing, that's why Sarah has brought conscious confidence into the world. Her upcoming book is about that. Her coaching programs are about that. Working with young people is about that. Really taking the initiative forward because it teaches something to us at a deep level, because within us, that deep thing still lives there, despite whatever you see in the headlines. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the message, the messenger, and the magic of this. We'll be right back. powerful your thoughts and beliefs are in determining your experience of your life? Is it really true that simply by changing some of the words you use in your day-to-day -day language that you can change your life? I'm Megan Edge. Join me on Playing on the Edge Radical Change with Ease with my co-host Dr. Pat on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. You know that moment when you realize you've mastered your wellness or that you will never fall off the roller coaster of life? Well, yeah, me either. But I still ride unicorn. I will teach you how to become a mindset master. You will learn how your habits and behavior affect the success of your nutrition and exercise, relationships, organization, and so much more. Motivation doesn't arrive in an email, so stop waiting for it. You have to take action, then motivation follows. I am Coach Peggy Well. Get out of your comfort zone and recognize the simple truth. We aren't that special. We all have crap to deal with, and we all have a lot more in common than not. I want to spark you into action. We will learn, love, and laugh together. So join me every first and third Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific for Coach Couch and Coffee Radio, where you will learn that being happy and healthy is way more than care stick and squat. I'll talk to you later. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Learn to live in the light and unveil the authentic you with a time of healing radio with me, Felistiana, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in every third Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific 
as I help listeners understand sacred fusion energy and how to connect to the spirit that fuels the very life we live. Explore the journey of spiritual transcendence and ultimately discover the path to peace, love, purpose, and wholeness. For more information, visit a timeofhealing.com. Are you truly ready to experience overflow in every area of your life? Are you ready to go from limited to limitless? Imagine starting your week off with a deeper connection to the dog consciousness. It's time for you to feel inspired, uplifted, and shifted. I invite you to join me, Tracy L, online or in person for our Soul Sundays. Start your week off feeling empowered and ready to serve and expand the miracles waiting for you. Welcome back, everyone. Great to have all of you here. This is Conscious Confidence. Um, uh, uh, this, this, yeah, Conscious Confidence Radio. But more importantly, it's really wonderful to have Sarah Main here in the studio with us. For those of you uh, you're able to watch on Facebook, and uh, somehow they're doing some live streaming thing in, in a different way. If you go to Transformation Talk Radio uh, and um, and go to Facebook Transformation Talk Radio, you'll be able to see this. You know, today we're talking about Sanskrit and we're talking about, you know, what it means to have this gateway to clarity and confidence and success. Because the thing that, that Sarah, that I would love for you to talk about is there's something that happens, and, and this has been recorded in studies. Highly successful people go from highly successful to not. Yeah. And the one thing they point to is a lack of clarity, confusion, mm. um, a detachment from any kind of energy vibration, right? And a secure value system, yeah, right? And so what, what I'd love for you to share with folks today about this and about Sanskrit is how this now is playing an important role in your upcoming book, the work you do and the coaching you do. Because it, it's not just talking about Sanskrit, the word. It's how do we take this wisdom and bring it forward to teach people? Ah, oh, great questions. <laughs> <laughs> how long have we got? Like about five. Of, <laughs> we can skip the break. <laughs> um, well, the, we, before the break, we spoke about the, the incredible potency and beauty and, and you know, effect of just hearing the sounds chanted, uh, you know, and that's, it, it is remarkable and wonderful and profound. However, for most people living their lives, you're not going to just sit there listening to chanting all day. You're then going to turn and have to deal with screaming kids or you've got problems at work or whatever it is, right? Traffic. That's right, programmers. Yeah, your, your own. Uh, <laughs> that's an inside joke. Uh, <laughs> you know, you've got your own issues and, and uh, suppressed material that comes up. And the way I was taught was you, you do need to address that material. You don't want to become um, absorbed in it and lost in it. Although, it, however, it does need to be released. It needs to be purified without making a big meal of it. Um, and this is where another aspect of Sanskrit can really help, and that is to actually go back to the very etymology and derivation of words. Because Sanskrit is unique in that rather than the meaning of a word being like, if you looked it up in a dictionary, say in English, yeah. take the word values in English, you looked up an English dictionary to want to learn more about values, what are they, and so on and so forth. Um, you would get a string of synonyms. So essentially you're still at the conceptual level. Whereas with Sanskrit, you look up a word in Sanskrit and it gives you all sorts of meanings, particularly if you use a good dictionary. I use the, the Monia Williams one, which is a very old dictionary, and that is considered the Rolls-Royce of dictionaries. Um, but underneath, underpinning all these meanings is a root, a root form in Sanskrit. 
So all the words come from roots. <clears throat> so think of a plant, roots growing. And these root forms are verbal in nature. Now I'm getting into some grammar. Stay with me. Don't go away, folks. It's okay. They're verbal in nature. Now, if you remember from your elementary school grammar lessons, verbs are doing words. They're actions, they're mm-hmm. activities, yeah. they're energies. So Sanskrit, all the words come from specific energies. <clears throat> now, this is important. Whenever I've explained this to people, their eyes light up because they suddenly get that this is different. Because this now, the energy tells you what you have to do in the action of something is where you'll find the real meaning. And now I'm leading to where the clarity comes from. Because you need to clarify the meanings that you hold for these fundamental concepts, like values. You can think you know what that means, but start delving into it. And then finding out what the meaning of values really is. And with Sanskrit, when I started looking at that, because I knew that was the underpinning of real confidence, was what is value about? What's important to you? You need to get back to those fundamentals of where your self-awareness derives from. You need the proper roots. And that's where values actually comes from. It comes from one of the words for it is mulyam, which means a root. And And Sanskrit says... If you want to understand the root of something, you look at flowering and prospering and flourishing. That's interesting, isn't it? Because if you look at a plant, you don't even think about the root. But of course, you infer immediately that if a, if a plant is flowering and flourishing, of course, the root's good. Yeah. And so Sanskrit says, look to the flourishing to know about the root, to find the root. You don't dig down to the root. You look at whether it's flourishing or not. And you take that in your life. If you find there's an area that's not flourishing, you need to get back to the root. You know, it's so interesting we're talking about this. I was sharing a story about my grandfather. And when he came over, um, he brought the root from the uh, grape vines. He brought. He was able to bring chunks of it. I mean, they literally had to flee because of, uh, mm. uh, you know, what was happening in Italy. Mm. But he, he, he was able, you know, he was able to go out and in the vineyard, the wines, right, the grapes, was able to grab several roots. And, and, and I never got to really ask him, but he would talk about why he picked that root and why he picked that root. And what I learned about what you're saying is, at least from him, and, you know, it translates from wine to a child to much more meaningful like you're talking about is that it's so important even in when you're describing sanskrit and the energy of that Mm. it's so important for us to understand what those roots are within us yeah it really is yeah it is well it talks it can i can i just say that the other word that i looked at was arika and arika means value but it means in terms of um, one of the aspects of that is what you honour. So there's value in terms of the root and there's value in terms of what you honour. And that's so important because the way it's described in the Sanskrit dictionary is honour as in you on, um, an honoured guest coming into your home. And when you think about that, you lay everything out the very best to an honoured guest in your home. So yeah. you think of the yeah. home the home of your heart. Mm. What honoured guest are you welcoming into your home, the home in your heart and laying out the best of yourself, the best of your energy to that? Now, if you're not aware of what that is, you could be honouring anything. Yeah. Sarah, you know what's fascinating about this? Um, you and I would have had a great time had I known you <laughs> back in uh, 19, let me just get the year, 1998, when I was knee deep in the middle of um, arguing a case for my dissertation. And because um, I wanted to study something that had less to do with counting widgets, but that was value based. Mm. But I had to find a construct to put it in. Yeah. But here's what happened. And I, and I, I want to talk with you about this when we come back, because 
um, sometimes we make decisions. Well, Pat, I'm never going to study broken promises. So why are, why do I need to talk about it? Right? Or maybe I'm never going to study Sanskrit. But why? Because here's something I want to say, and then I want to talk to you when we come back. When I went on this journey, I didn't know I was studying broken promises. But I was studying something that was so in the hearts of people. And it didn't follow any construct that had ever been studied. So when I, when I had to ask questions, I was asking the wrong question. And finally, someone said to me, Pat, don't ask a question about integrity. Ask people to define what it means. Mm -hmm. Because when you get those definitions, and, and they did, there's a five-point definition across the board, thousands of people, these five things. And if you take any one of them out, according to this study, it's not integrity. But these are things that are at the heart. They're not in management books, and so therefore they don't get any value in corporations today. But we're learning that that's not true. When we come back, why is it, believe this is the truth, and Sarah's going to explain it, the latest study on Generation Zers, I don't even know how old that is, Jessica, the latest business study on Generation Zers when asked, what do you look for in your company and your employer? What is it about the answer to that question that has now turned the industry and businesses upside down and should probably hire Sarah now. Let's take a short break. <laughs> Share that when we come back. Are you ready to branch out? Take a leap of faith. Then tune in to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills on TransformationTalkRadio.com every second and fourth Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific to equip, empower, and enlighten yourself. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. So get fearlessly ready and get powerfully rooted in your yes to live it up, love it up, and let it go to ignite the life you deserve. Visit GetRootedRadio.com and tune in. This is Debbie Pokornik with a moment for standing in your power. Self-control begins with noticing how different feelings present themselves in your body. When you're feeling sensitive, for example, your chin might quiver, tears might well up in your eyes, and your voice might catch in your throat. Anger? On the other hand, might appear as tension in your jaw, back, or arms, along with clenched fists, heat in the upper torso, scowling, and a strong desire to yell. <laughs> the more aware you become of your body cues, the easier it will be to recognize when you're on the road to disaster. Choose the emotions that cause you problems, then start noticing and logging the body cues that come with them. For information and to work with Debbie, visit EmpoweringNRG.com. That's EmpoweringNRG.com. Has your buzz for life buzzed off? Feeling ignored, invisible, and wondering if this is really all there is? The years go by faster as we gain momentum. You're halfway there. Are you gathering speed or puttering out? Hit your stride for the liberating half of life. Comfortable in your skin? You can do better than that. Tune in to Discovering You Again Radio every fourth Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific as host Susan Axelrod encourages listeners to decide what they want, get inspired to action, and face challenges head on. Host Susan Axelrod pulls no punches, encouraging you to grab the brass ring and soar. For more information about Susan, go to www.whatwillyourlegacybe.com. 
Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and join Sarah on an adventurous journey to the deeper level of meaning to move beyond today's world of constant change, confusion, and uncertainty beyond the shadow of fear. This hit show explores key concepts such as confidence, values, and attitude in a dynamic way. To learn more about Sarah and her work, visit sarahmain.com. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Conscious Confidence Radio. And by the way, this is Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom. And this is Sarah Main Show. And she is sitting right across from me in the studio with Benny and Jessica over there. And um, there's a reason that she is here. And it's a, it's a very, very, um, for me, it is so absolutely amazing. Because to be able to take a journey with someone, but then you know, to see how that journey turns into a fantastic book. And we'll tell you about the book because you can pre-order it. Um, But also to see how it blossoms, to use your word, Sarah, (laughs) you know, to see how it blossoms. And there's a reason for it. And and I will, for those of you that are are sending me messages, I will tell you what that word, what what happened as the result of that study. We're going to get right to it. Um, But Sarah, for you, I want to make sure everybody goes to your website, Conscious Confidence dot com consciousconfidence.com and you know sarah also works with individuals she works with groups she works with children um and you know that is the depth and the breadth of her coaching practice and you can find out more about that as well uh social media right as well um and i want to ask you tell us about the book because i'm telling you the launch date is around the corner (laughs) um but I am so absolutely thrilled and honored to see this come to life. Tell us about the book. <laughs> when is it available? Can we get it now? And <laughs> Yahoo for making sure they didn't change that name on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did try that. <laughs> they did. Well, not not hard. They, not hard. They didn't push too hard. <laughs> uh, well, the, to answer the, one of those questions, the the book's out in January next year. I think it's about the 8th. Yep, it is. Out. It's available for pre-order now on Amazon.com, um, Inner Traditions, the publishers, their website, um, IndieBound, Barnes & Noble. It's all available for pre-order now. And from my website, ConsciousConfidence.com. Um, so, yes, that's, that's the basic information about the book. But you were there at the beginning. I was. Because you said to me when, as this was coming forward, and there's a whole story about how this came forward, you said to me, there's a book in this. (laughs) I can tell you that was not on my radar at the time. Thanks very much. (laughs) And um, one thing's led to another and there's a book. And uh, it certainly clarified everything as I've written the book and then gone through the editorial process as well, the editing um, and it's just clarified the whole thing. And um, the the title itself, Conscious Confidence, I didn't think that up. Um, as I was talking to you and working with you yeah. in the early, early days, even before the first radio show, because um, we were we started in one place, and you said there's more to this, and I knew there was, but it was it was sort of out of my realm. I just could feel there was more, and you said there's more to this, and then it started coming forward more and more. And then I thought, what's this called? You said, what's this called? And I was standing in the kitchen about 10 minutes after I thought, what is this called? And boom, it just came to me, conscious confidence. And, um, and I went with that. And at first, that, there wasn't a lot of love for that. Not from you, but from <laughs> just generally. Um, I had love for you, it. You did. You I loved did. it. You loved I it. I did love it. No, you did. I'm, I'm saying I was that. horrified when, when I think there was a moment, and I would say a nanosecond, when they were thinking of changing the name on the book. I was yeah. like, no. Yeah, but when I said, look, I'm very happy to change the title of the book. I don't, I don't mind. Um, <clears throat> and that, but when I explained how it came forward, and this is really wonderful, is there was just instantly complete respect for the fact that this was brought forward 
um, and it felt like it came from the the universal consciousness or energy, and um, there was just complete respect. Fine, the conversation stopped. Fine, complete respect for that. Um, and then the tagline to sort of, you know, just helped explain what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> it was <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. And you know, I remember that. Um, I remember pretty much every part of. Uh, of almost every conversation because um, what, what I, what I want to talk about and what we're talking about here. And by the way, let me give you the answer. The answer to that study that was done and they tried to do more studies to find out if generation Zers were all like different empathy. The number one thing they say that they, they, they feel companies are obligated. So that's a psychological contract. Mm. Is empathy, not money, not job, not health care. Empathy. Mm. They are not going to work in a place. Right? Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. Mm. <clears throat> but uh, this is part of what we're talking about here today, about ancient Sanskrit, but about the fact that folks may never study it. Mm. I never studied it. I, I, I had never sat down and said, I'm going to study it. But I connected. Mm. And so let's talk about what that connection is and why is that connection, why does that become a gateway for such enormous clarity, success, and confidence? Because I will tell you this, and I think this is why I was so drawn to it. You know, I think every one of us has an Achilles heel, right? Yeah. My Achilles heel, if I think about it throughout my life, because I've done a lot of work on it, is doubt. Mm -hmm. Doubt is the venom that holds us back. Yeah. I'm not talking fear. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, fear is another thing. But this moment where either somebody influences you or you influence yourself, that you cannot do something or that you are doing something, but for some reason it's never going to materialize. Yeah. And the reason that I do the work that I do with others now is because I know that I'm not alone with that. But conscious confidence and what you've created, and I would love for you to talk about this in terms of Sanskrit, it really does provide that vibrational fuel for a level of clarity that we cannot get from our left brain alone. Yeah, oh, oh, most definitely. Um, just just think of that proton pill, <laughs> proton <laughs> energy pill. What was that? What was that <laughs> character, Benny? Roger Ramjet. Ro Roger Ramjet. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, I have coached senior executives. I've, I've coached some pretty high-profile people and, um, and also just you know, people not so well-known But and in all sorts of fields, in business, in finance, in um, music, in the arts, in photography. And it's interesting, the more I go on with this, that when someone wants to move forward in a new area in their life or develop something or step forward in one way or another, they meet some point, it doesn't matter how successful they are, where they, and they have said literally these words to me, and they sort of go, but do I have the confidence to do mm, this, right. right, at every point? And by definition, if something's new, it's unknown and there's an uncertainty about it. If it's known and certain, then it's not new by definition. Right. right. <laughs> okay, so let's just take that as a working hypothesis. But for anyone, this area of doubt, it the seeds of that are deeper than we realise. And a lot of people can pump themselves up and, yeah, I can do this, and they're working very much at a cognitive level, and that's fine. But what I was interested in was what is really going on. And look, this is how I was trained, is go back to the roots, go back to the source. I was taught always you want the source wisdom. Yeah. And that's where you go to timeless wisdom, yeah. not just a quick fix, right? That's like taking a sort of an aspirin for a headache. If, the, if you've got persistent headaches, you need to find out what the source is, the cause. Well, in terms of actually how to live your life and who you are, you need the source wisdom. That's the wisdom that doesn't change. It's utterly dependable. You don't need a lot of it because it's very potent and it works. Um, and when I was considering the whole area of fear and doubt and confidence, the whole term confidence came up and I'd never really put my attention on it. And when I went back to Sanskrit, I, came, I discovered 12 words 
in Sanskrit for confidence. Mm -hmm. And I started researching back to the etymology, back to the root. And because of the energetic nature, remember the verbal roots, I I thought, what's happening to you when you are confident? And And then I started looking at these verbal roots. And all of a sudden, just it started making more sense to me about how you could learn and teach this and practice it. And, you know, that gave me huge confidence that this was possible for people. This wasn't just a magic pill. You did have to practice it, Mm -hmm. but that this was a possibility that people could learn and practice. And it was simple and practical. And that was important to me. Because complex is useless. No one can do anything with that. Yeah, and, and, you know, mm. this is really for, you know, so many of us today and what we're talking about today. You know, it is a conversation. But what you have done from that first moment of really naming it mm. and how you've developed what this could be, what are the, what are the, what are the essential aspects of it? that can be taught to people Hmm. um, so that people can then be successful to live the lives they want. And that's what you've done in your FUSE program. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I've been accused of a few things here recently with my my table tennis coach. And if he says to me, focus one more time, um, and I thought about that. And in my mind, I think I am focusing. But he views my level of focus and focusing on whether or not I actually am able to execute something. Mm. And I find that interesting. I was review. I was looking at this today because you and I have talked about the FUSE program, right? Focusing, uniting, simplifying, and energizing. We've talked about it. And what I thought was, I don't need, I need all of these. I don't need one thing, Mm. you know. Is focus really the reason that I'm not executing? That's one example, but that's really symbolic in life. You know, and I think what you're talking about, this level of confidence and the way you've created this for confidence, for understanding, it's so much more than the English word for confidence. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 And that's why you need to go back to what I say. You need to go back to the Sanskrit because it, it's like, it takes all your concepts, which you mostly, we don't know we have, right? These are subconscious. So by definition, we're not conscious of them most of the time. Um, And we carry them around and we see things, we're experiencing things from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed. And It it is colouring everything all the time. It's filtering and interpreting everything all the time. And that's the thing about going back to the Sanskrit. It's like taking our concepts, it shines a light on them, and it puts them through a sort of washing cycle, right? It does. And, And then when you think of confidence, you think of it in a whole new way. You act in a whole new way. You think and feel in a whole new way. changes your life experience. But you do need to get these concepts up into your conscious awareness and put them through the washing cycle. And I know no better way than Sanskrit, I can tell you that. And that's what I was taught. I experienced it myself, and it works. Well, you, you know what? I want to talk to you, and we're going to go ahead, Benny, and skip the break here, um, because I want to make sure we talk about this. In the book, right, you have stories that you share. Yeah. But you've also created this beautiful framework that, you know, when I think about, the many conversations we have and, and the interconnectedness of various aspects of this, y- you had to create a new perspective mm. for a new level of knowledge for us. Tell us a little bit about that and tell us about how you've taken this wisdom and have created a way for people to just learn it, study it, and, and, and implement And do it. <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, well, the transformation doesn't come without the actual application. Yeah. You know, it's like having a beautiful recipe book with all these gorgeous pictures and never actually cooking the recipes. It, <laughs> you do actually have to, if you want to really experience that recipe, you need to cook it and eat it. That's right. It's not even cook it, just actually need to eat it. You need to assimilate it. So that, that said, um, really the 
comes back down to in, in um, the Upanishads, they talk about the triple fire of knowledge, meditation and practice. And that is the fundamentals of transformation. And you need the knowledge. You need new knowledge. Um, and I'm just bringing forward the timeless wisdom that is available. It's the best of what I was given. And one of the things that came to me was I wanted to just offer the best of what I'd been given because I was so blessed yeah. to have this showered upon me, the guidance, the help, the knowledge, the wisdom. And I just wanted to offer it. But obviously, you know, not everyone's just going to pick the Upanishads off the sh- bookshelf and start reading it. Right. It's not going to help them. Not this, in this day and age necessarily. Um, so that was, that was that. But the Sanskrit came by virtue of me asking myself, what is happening when you are confident? And I thought, well, oh, I need to Sanskrit. Went and got all my books out. I hadn't looked at them for a while. And I started looking and here I am talking about Sanskrit and the publishers said we want Sanskrit front and centre. When I wrote a proposal for the book, yeah. they said, great, we love the idea. Sanskrit's the thing we want. Um, that's it. That's the point of difference. Can you rewrite the, the, uh, propo- right. rewrite the proposal right. with Sanskrit at the top, at the centre, build everything out from the Sanskrit? That was They were the words that they used. So I re jig the whole emphasis and here I am who knew talking to you in Seattle about Sanskrit which to be honest with you just makes my heart sing I love it <laughs> and you, 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 you know what people I, I, I've, I don't know how many ways I've tried to say it over a 15 16 year period but the fact that I'm here doing what I'm doing and have the network I, I have it isn't so much about the end game it's certainly for me has been about the lessons of the journey yeah. um, and the realization that this is a journey that I cannot describe to my friends because there's no beginning and end. It's not like I'm going to get on a plane and I'm going to go to California. Yeah. It's more like there's an energy that has to come forward. Mm. And I may not know today, but I've been shown something. And so... Because of that, you know, we are doing something that may not make sense, may not make sense to the bank, may not make sense to other networks, but we have to do it. Um, The parts of this that I find, you know, so fascinating is that Jessica and Linda do a great job of keeping me on track. It's not that these other things don't need to happen, but there needs to be an order, yeah. right? And I think so often in today's world, we are so distracted. Yes. How will this help folks yeah. with that, but much more than that? Yeah. Well, the essence of the, the FUSE program um, it starts with values, and each chapter in the book, it, there's many topics beyond the, fu- the FUSE program. It builds up to the FUSE program because I do talk about the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies, and they need to be in alignment and balance and the concept of Santulana, which is balance. Um, we, it, there's a whole of sort of background stuff that goes on, and we talk about victim, victor, and choice coming out of a victim mindset, being a victor. And making that choice. And I look at any, in each chapter, the key concepts, I go back to the Sanskrit. What does the Sanskrit teach us? And my endeavor has been to just explain simply, um, but clearly what the Sanskrit is pointing to. And I reference a key Sanskrit scholar from ancient times called Panini. If you read it, it looks like Panini, like the sandwiches you buy, but it's Panini. And he had just the most ingenious, marvellous way of helping to get back to the real meaning um, of something. So this is the washing cycle business I was talking about with your thoughts and concepts. If you have a kind of, ah, aha moment, that's your thoughts going through the washing cycle, right? Because I guarantee it will change how you think. Over time, it will change how you think. Um, So that's wonderful. That's Sanskrit working. So I... Took each of those as a what does the Sanskrit say? 
and then I illustrate it with traditional teaching stories. Now, that's very important. These stories are there for a reason because they go in easily. They go into our hearts easily. And the lesson is there without a whole lot of prosing on and intellectualization. It goes in emotionally through the story. So that's an easy pill. And then I've used contemporary accounts. So these are real people, people I've taught, people I've coached myself, real stories of actual actual examples in life of what this may look like. Um, And then I've got practices because that's where the rubber hits the road. And they're simple practices. They're beautiful practices. And you needn't feel you have to do every single one of them. Start with the one that you're drawn to. And they build up. Um, and I'm actually going to develop a journal that you can get that will great. guide people through that. I'm, work, I'm going to start working on that. But the the values and then the attitude, I look at both of those. And then we look at focusing, uniting, simplifying and energizing because they're the fourfold energies of conscious confidence. Yeah. But you need all six values, positive attitude, and then focusing, uniting, simplifying and energizing. You get all of that. You have access to a confidence within yourself. And you can go back to that whenever you're challenged and it helps you transcend that fear shadow. And your comment about your table tennis coach saying you need to focus, we have focus in certain areas if we want to, but if there's a general sense of distractibility, then there'll be some element such as the the aspect of simplifying, which is letting go of the unnecessary things and sticking to what's essential. And things like simplifying... Um, if we start practicing that, we find it much easier to focus and keep our attention steady. So there might be a practice in there for simplifying, for example. And let me just tell you, because your ears must have been ringing, because what I realized, because I was getting ready for today, and what I realized, and I turned to Jen and I, and I said, look, I can focus, but can we simplify this drill So we're not going two shots to my backhand, one to my forehand, then jump over to the other side, loop from this, hit from that, and then and then anywhere. I Mm. said, that's the drill. Can we simplify? And so it just came out of my mouth. Simplify. Can we simplify? But in the end, this is helping us create a way of life that we totally love. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a way of life we love. Um, Sarah, you and I are going to be talking more. I'm excited about the book. And every show, you end the show beautifully. Uh, I want to thank you for today. Consciousconfidence.com, for those of you as the website, just want to make sure you know. You can pre-order the book if you go to Amazon or you go to Sarah's site, Conscious Confidence. And what is it, Inner Traditions? Inner Traditions. Inner Traditions. Thank you to Inner Traditions. Yes. Thank you, Inner Traditions, Thank for you. doing this. Um, and for folks out there, if they want to work with you, they can go to Conscious Confidence as yeah, well. Yeah. And but I'll, every show, you, you end with a prayer. Yeah. This is no different, is it? No. <laughs> um, this is a beautiful prayer. I have taught this to young children, uh, adults, and I've known this probably almost all my life. Um, And it's from the Isha Upanishad. So this is timeless wisdom. And it's the invocation at the beginning of the Upanishad. Each of them have this opening prayer. And it's called the perfect prayer, well, just for the want of a title. And the English translation is, that is perfect, this is perfect. Perfect comes from perfect. Take perfect from perfect, the remainder is perfect. May peace and peace and peace be everywhere. And the Sanskrit. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Mm. Sarah Main, everyone. I'm Dr. Pat. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. Thank you, Benny. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Carter. And thanks to all of you. We'll see you next time.
Thank you for listening to Conscious Confidence with Sarah Main. Join us next month on Transformation Talk Radio for more timeless wisdom with Sarah's exciting and innovative approach to living. Discover more joy, freedom, and step into your limitless potential. For more information on Sarah Main and her work, or to listen to past shows, visit sarahmain.com.